it said call attendance so i googled the casino's phone number on my phone i didn't know what that meant because i've never been in a casino <laughs> and they're like just wait somebody will come to you i was like okay so call attendant yeah he's a phone hey siri call attendant yeah oh no, no don't do it siri <laughs> We're back with another episode of On the Porch with Front Porch Music. Uh, I'm Logan, and this is Jenna. Hey, Jenna. She's just sitting there smiling at me. Logan was on mute most of the episode, so I thought I would give you the floor now. (sighs) I'm the idiot. Half the episode, this is a very Jenna-heavy episode. She talks, you're going to notice she talks a lot in this episode because I was trying to get a word in. But <laughs> turns out my microphone was on mute. So um, that was that. And now she's not going to talk on this entire intro, I guarantee you. <laughs> Today we had talked to uh, country artist Ben Chase. He's from PEI. Um, his latest single, Somebody Summer, is out now. He has a new song coming out in a couple weeks called A Bad Day to Be a Beer. And uh, uh, Jenna, do you have anything to say, to say for yourself? Ben moved to Alberta at 18 years old, scaring the shit out of his parents, but that wasn't the end of it. He also moved to Nashville a few years later. He's definitely an island boy at heart, loves writing music by the ocean, grew up on the coast. Uh, He's definitely the saltwater cowboy he sings about. And uh, here's our conversation with Ben Chase. Welcome to the porch ben chase third time's a charm i think we tried to book you twice but you're just so damn busy here we are (laughs) we're here finally done we we tried once in season one tried once in season two now we're in season three and here we are third time's the charm it's nice to be on the porch love the view the view (laughs) ah stop it (laughs) (laughs) um you're coming to us from ontario which is a weird thing because you are from pei and you live in nashville so what the heck's going on here? Yeah, well, it's sure starting to feel like festival season, I'll say. You know, um, the time recording this is just kicking off. Um, honestly, I just, yeah, it feels like festival season because we're squeezing in like a podcast that, you know, this evening tonight. I literally and this is, just had a disaster of a travel day, flying red eye and had, you know, a good old Pearson six hour. Um, landed at Pearson at six this morning, only got here at 3 p.m. on no sleep. Got an hour for sleep, and then waking up, we're doing podcasts, and that's festival season for you. (laughs) So it feels good, but just here in Ontario for a couple days, and then we're flying out to PEI on Friday to go play Cavendish, which is exciting. So uh, just in the middle of it. So I'm glad I got to at least make it back in time to chat with you guys today. Thanks to Air Canada for the lovely travel day. But hey, we're used to it. Thanks, Air Canada, not sponsored. Yeah. (laughs) Stay away. I'm a big Air Canada guy, actually. Cavendish season already. I know. Did you see your... Did you see your big Air Canada guy? I love Air Canada, that. honestly. They they usually get me places when I need. I've to never go. had an issue with Air Canada. Yeah, it's just been a bit of a bad a bad uh, bad travel day. There's a bit of a thunderstorm that we couldn't kind of land here. So, but uh, oh well. It's that's that's kind of the fun of festival seasons. Just like go go go. I got this podcast. I have another one right after, and then I'll sleep like a baby tonight and get back on the grind tomorrow. So it's fun. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> well, you're headed to Cavendish, you said. Uh, heading back home. How's that feel? I'm excited, and I usually every time I go out to play in the East Coast, usually every summer, that's been like a blessing through this last couple of years, is like every summer I always get one one show back on the island. So uh, I got Cavendish this year, which is nice, and, you know, I always go out. My, my family's there, my mom, dad, my four grandparents, my sisters, my niece, my nephew, they're all still there, um, and I don't get to see them very often as much, or as much as I'd love to um, with the business we're in, so uh, being living in Nashville, so it's nice to go home for a week before and just kind of go back to my small town and see everybody and get a little bit rejuvenated, jump in the ocean a couple too many times, and then uh, really get that salt water back in my system before I get on stage at Cavendish, uh, yeah, on J- July 5th this year. So, yeah. Nice. It's crazy that it's already here. It's summertime. That's what I'm I saying. I know. May and June just whizzed right by. Yeah, it's incredible. Have you so. played Cavendish before? I have actually. It's kind of crazy. Um, it's cool. It's my second time playing. Um, flashback. It was 2019, the first time I played, um, and I just released my first single. So it's crazy to think like 
how different times have been since I played it because I just released my first single and um, back then it did really good out of the gate and the Cavendish people reached out right away, offered me a main stage slot. And I only have one song out ever. <laughs> Um, but there's just like a lot of <laughs> Islanders talking about it and, you know, promoters want to sell tickets. So I was like, Hey, let's go for it. I'm down. And I was, I remember I was so excited cause I went to, I went there like probably like six years, like all through high school, I would go there and, and party with my friends. And I've always <laughs> wanted to play that festival. So when they did call, I, I'll never forget how excited I was. Um, and then, uh, we went back and played it, but I only, at the time I released one song after that. So I only had two, two singles out, but now I have a whole record and, um, we just did three shows in PEI in the last year. And like, they were all like, you know, my full playing down my record, like all original songs. So it's cool. Like this time, because I, you know, I have like, I had to cut some songs that I literally, the radio stations out there play because we can't, we can't fit them in because, you know, we only get a 50 minute set. So, uh, so it's going to be a lot different, but yeah, I'm really excited about getting out there just because I have so much of my original Hmm. music now, you know, that first time you played, were you like you were obviously really excited but were you so nervous i was so nervous and i was so green it's so funny like you know i was so new to like i didn't know how festival stages worked or anything like that like like i was like oh what time sound check they're like sound check what are you talking about (laughs) like Like, oh how cute yeah you know and (laughs) and just like yeah just being so raw like it back then i i you know i was just learning to play with in-ear monitors and just like so new to I was new to, I was used to performing a lot, like playing like acoustic shows or full band stuff, but not to like the festival scene. So yeah, it, it was incredible. It was like a lot to take in. Like the, my first festival would be like one of the Canadian mm. majors on a main stage. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be a really cool moment to come home and play that. And yeah, coming up real soon. Yeah. Let's live in 2019 for a second. Actually, maybe we should go back a little bit further than 2019, but you have just released your first single were you was music always on the books for you did you have anything else no that was, al- that was that was always it yeah I grew up um I wrestled for team PEI and uh, travel a lot wrestling um and we just like I, I you know went to the Canada games and competed nationally a lot oh cool <clears throat> um yeah I just my stature I'm not the tallest dude so I, I had to find something that I have my own little weight class and I had to compete against people my size because in hockey, I would just get thrown around because I was always too small. Um, so I went into wrestling and I excelled really well at it. And I learned a lot about like, you know, wrestling is an individual sport. And I, I love that about what it's taught me about music because like, you know, you're only going to get as hard as you work is what you're going to get back. Like, you know, and kind of taught me how to, you know, work really, really hard in those, in those earlier still. But like back then I was like, I need to do everything I can to meet everybody and write the best songs I can. And, um, so I, I when as soon as I graduated high school, I knew that I wanted to get into music. Um, so I was like, well, I can't, I, I can, I can pursue it in PEI, but if I want to be the best, I got to be surrounded by the best people I can at the time. And I was only 18. So I moved across country to Alberta, which we call some people call like the most Western area in Canada, you know, so where all the Cowboys are. And, 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 uh, I have one connection, um, in, out there, which led to, so many connections when I went to the ACMA awards, uh, which now are called the CMAB awards. They used to be called the ACMA awards. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was great. I moved from PEI, moved out there, um, met so many people and just became so much friends with people. And, and, uh, so that's kind of how I started. That's a big difference going from ocean life to To prairie mountain life. life. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What a change. Yeah. So it was really cool. Went out there and I just loved it and met kind of like lucked out and met like the right people. And, that's actually where I met Maddie McKay, who produced the first half of this, re- my first record, and then produced that first single for me and all my earlier stuff. And Maddie introduced me to people. But even like when I was the kid in PEI, I knew that as soon as I was 21, I was going to pursue moving to Nashville. And then as soon as I turned 21, I got my first visa. Um, and it was actually a really cool full, full circle moment. I did I did three years in Alberta um, and then, you know, kind of get to know the industry. Um, funny thing is, though, at that year – um, the CMAB awards, the fans choice award was actually voted on by the industry. So it's like, as you guys know, like these award shows, a lot of the times the industry votes for who awards. So it was really cool. It's fans choice was voted by the industry, but it was just That's like a weird. big general category. But, uh, yeah, my last year there, I actually won the fans choice of the Alberta country music awards, but like 
it's industry folks that know it. It's cool when the industry votes you into one of those categories. So, and I was moving for Nashville two months later. Um, so it's kind of like a really cool recap of my, <clears throat> of my, uh, three years there. And then it was March and I was getting ready to move to Nashville, 21 hot, hot out of the gate and uh, the pandemic hit. <laughs> so then I had to move back to PEI actually for two years and got to Nashville just three years ago. So it's been a bit of a journey, but now I'm down in Nashville and, it's kind of all the process of it and how we ended up where we are. When your parent, when you told your parents you were going to Alberta at 18, were they like, are you sure? Maybe you shouldn't. Yeah, they were, were they really like, concerned what? about me. But I was like, I want to go out there. <laughs> but <yeah. laughs> They were really concerned about You know, my me. parents are like the loveliest people too. Like they, they're they such great people. My, my mom and dad are really special people. They, um, they, uh, they foster children and it's really nice to see uh-huh. like, they're just some of the nicest people. And that's just one of the many things they do. They're just such good people. And I'm, you know, real blessed to be raised by people like that. And, but like whenever, but they're very small town people. So like, they're the nice, very nice people, but they're very small town people. My, like when we go on family trips anywhere to like Florida or Toronto, wherever we are, I'm driving the car because my parents aren't very familiar with merging. Like there's no two lanes. It's all just one, you know, yellow line row we're from. And it's very small town people. So when I said I'm moving to Edmonton, Alberta, where I moved at first, they're like, what? And I was like, yeah, I'm going. So I packed up my hockey bag and and I went. And that's how it all kind of got started. But they're (laughs) they're pretty worked up about me. Um, That's so many provinces that way. (laughs) Literally. Um, And this is honestly, you know, this is one of my favorite stories to tell. And I don't know if I ever told you guys a story, but it's kind of like a full circle moment. So I, before I moved out to Alberta and pursued music, um, I went to college for about two months. I was in the child and youth care worker program. Um, and uh, I actually quit because I was like, I was just like, I, I was in it and I was like not loving school. And my heart was in music. And I was like, I just want to go out and do music. I got offered a, a bass guitar gig in Alberta. Was it? Uh, on New Year's Eve. So I flew out on Boxing Day. So I only went September, October, November, left college, right? So I moved out there and I played my first gig on New Year's Eve and I got back to Edmonton and uh, my roommate at the time was like, well, it's New Year's, you want to go to the casino? And I was like, sure, I'll go with you. And uh, I was like, I, I've never been to a casino yet because I was just like still 18 in Alberta because you can't gamble at 19 in PEI, right? So I go mm. to the casino for the first time, no idea what I'm doing have a student loan i'm broke i'm like getting ready to probably go you know find a little a little job somewhere on the side doing music and and i went into the casino never played a machine before had 20 dollars. i was like that's all i can play but i'll try it i've never been in before <clears throat> and uh i was hitting on a game called quick hits and i hit <laughs> it was like 250 a bid and i was like i only get eight of these that's it to come here <laughs> <laughs> and I hit and I and then it started popping up. It was like jackpot, jackpot, call attendant. And it was five thousand eight hundred dollars that I won, which was the exact amount of my student loan that I had left for school. So Whoa. it was kind of a weird, like full circle moment where I was like, I remember I called my parents, I was like, uh, I just won the exact amount of my student loan. So I paid off my student loan um that that instantly. So then I wasn't caught up in a student loan having to work and I really could kind of like focus on just playing gig by gig and, you know. See, that's so responsible. I like, yeah. <laughs> I would have been like, like yeah. <laughs> I would have been like, drinks are on me, guys, all yeah. night. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was like, wow, it was just, it was really weird how it was the exact same amount as my student loan that I just left school to pursue music for. And I was like, tell me I ain't meant to do something. And, you know, maybe we just kind of all had a little fate in, in, uh, in the world and the way it works that maybe that was a sign that it was supposed to happen and yeah so it's all kind of worked out but they were definitely stressed that you know but when i called them a week in and say yo i just won almost six grand <laughs> we paid off my student loan they felt a lot better <laughs> they're like we're coming to alberta <laughs> seriously the whole party when are we going to cuba <laughs> <laughs> that's funny i feel like you did tell me that story because as you started saying this i was like why do i know how this ends yeah yeah it was pretty yeah it's like that's I, wild never forget that yeah that was one of and those then, moments. Yeah. Have you had any moments? I mean, that one's very specific, but have you had any of those moments since? Pro- yeah, you know what? I, you, on the jet lag mind, I may be a little puzzled to try to think of one. Like, I, I'm sure there's lots more. Maybe it'll come out in these conversations. Um, but 
that was kind of like the signature one, maybe. It's a pretty maybe. big one. Yeah, for sure. But there's just been a lot of like right place, right time situations more than anything for me. And that's been like maybe not like that big, you know, the exact number thing. But a lot of times like, you know, we got asked to do a slot for a show and then turns out they booked a concert that day. And they're like, oh, you know, instead of having you on, this was literally – I think like six months after that we were booked and they're like, Oh, instead of um, having you, we don't want to cancel you. So we just booked Dan and Shade. Do you want to open up for them? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like came out, no songs out. I literally play all songs. I never record any of them. Cause I had to play originals. Like that was like six months later. I'll never forget that. And then it was just like, there's just been so many like things that just like led one thing to another, like the, you know, just meeting the people at the right time and, and slowly working my way. And, and, uh, and working all the way in Nashville. So by the time you got to uh, deciding you were going to go to Nashville, were your parents just like, Ugh, another move? Or were they like, of course, this is the next move? Or I think by then they were okay with it. They're starting to like maybe get used to like trusting to me, like it's going to work out a bit. Like because the first year they're like, what the heck? And then my stuff started doing well. And I started, you know, being able to at least provide for myself and playing some cool shows. And, and, uh, and then my music started doing really good. And, and then I was like, I want to go to Nashville. I, I always want to go when I was 21. So it, it kind of worked out nicely um, in the end because I did get to come back to PEI for about a year and a half before I moved down because of the pandemic. So like I got to actually spend a lot more family time. And honestly, honestly, like in that time, we were just all writing on Zoom. So I think I wrote like 200 songs or something in that period, like because we were all just like hustling and like, I, you know, all the people that were just stuck at home like, – oh, at the time, I was writing like a ton with like Lydia Sutherland. She'd be like, "Oh, yeah, let's just book two rights a day." Like she'd book like three rights a day. That girl, the whole pandemic, like it's like stuff like that. And like everyone was just hustling. I met a lot of people on Zoom, but honestly, I, I think I think that was actually one of the best things that could have happened to me going home. Because another thing was because I was a wrestler in high school, I didn't really like get to party that often because we were it's like a very high level athlete, right? Um, <clears throat> You know, I may not look very mean, but I, I I was a pretty good wrestler back in the day. And, uh, but I was always, you know, making sure I was eating clean and, and like I was cutting weight for tournaments and stuff and very disciplined in high school. So I wasn't really able to get those like kind of like party years out. And then I moved to Alberta and all my friends are music industry. So on the weekends, we're all, you know, Alberta, kind of like the way it works out there is like, there's a venue in Fort Mac, a venue in Grand Prairie, one in Medicine Hat. So you leave Thursday morning with your band, play Thursday, Friday, Saturday come on Sunday. So I never really had a regular weekend life because pretty well, I would say 50 of the, of, of the weekends of the year, my band and I were doing three nights on a weekend. So it was just like a whole different vibe of, uh, of like life, friendship life. Cause all my buddies were industry. So I never really had the weekend stuff. So when I went home, I actually got like reconnected with my buddies from high school and just like did stuff that wasn't all just music industry for a couple of years. And that's kind of nice. Yeah. I think it actually like helped me with songwriting a bit to like think a bit from like not just a guy whose whole life and friends and everything's all music industry. Right. Mm. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, like the pandemic was obviously <clears throat> so negative, but we do like, we, like we've been hearing some stories of like a lot of good coming from it as well in terms yeah. of like reconnecting with even ourselves and, and all of that. Yeah. It's, it's honestly like, pretty insane like how nice it was and I just got to spend time in the island and like we rented this like cottage back home because all these like cottages it, the PEI was closed off tourists couldn't go there so like all these cottage rental companies were like we're renting by the month like for like a third of the price so like my cousin and I just rented a nice spot on the ocean and I'd be like Fine. riding and I would just see like the waves and just be looking out you know and it's not a bad place to spend a oh, summer it sounds like that. so nice <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty nice. I love the yeah. It's definitely uh, one of my favorite places in the world. I've only been I've been to PEI once, but I, I was never there as an adult, so I don't actually oh, yeah. really remember. Man, it, you gotta come out. It's I know, so I, fun out there. I gotta come so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I was once too, but that was it. I'm surprised you guys haven't made a trip out for Cavendish or anything like that yet. One day. One, one day. day, Ben. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the thing about festivals. <laughs> Is there's a lot of them. Yeah, there there are a lot of them, <laughs> and they're expensive. Yeah, for sure. But it's definitely a really cool place. I uh, I'm excited to go out there for a week and just kind of get some time in. Definitely gonna go down to the beach one day and just write some tunes and listen to the water too. It's definitely one of my favorite things to do. One of my place favorite places to write too is just sit by the waves and vibe in the summer. Vibes is pretty good. Dare I say, 
uh, leverage your inner saltwater cowboy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> is. Uh, yeah, we we like grew up right on like lot like in in a beach town, right? So like, as kids, we were just jump on our quads and cruise down the beach. Like my mom had, she just recently sold and got a new one, but she had like to this old like six inch boogie beach, like Jeep. And like, we would cruise in that, like it's like down the beaches for kilometers and just like live, you know, just living in the summer. It's pretty great. So it's definitely not a bad place to be in the summertime. <laughs> no. And then now you live in Nashville where it's yep. hotter than the surface of the sun. Yeah. As you know, yeah. I definitely love it there. It's and you know, it works out great. Ideally I'd love to eventually like get to a place where I can spend my June, July, August on the island and then uh then dip right you know, just fly out for shows from there and then and then dip right back down to Nashville for the winter and not have to deal with any snow. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> yeah. So that's the end goal for me. That's kinda what I'm starting to set my sets to, sights towards and, and uh but yeah, starting to get some stuff in America recently, which is fun, and, and uh, hopefully that leads into more shows. But then it'd be probably harder to have a spot in the island, so maybe I'll have to get a place in Florida too one day. Who knows? Oh, you know, <laughs> just need a couple of number one songs or something. And, and then you, but <laughs> with the real then, estate market, I can maybe buy a trailer in Florida. And then you'll, and then you'll need somewhere on the on the west coast. Yep, somewhere in the. Actually, just we just flew in from Kelowna today. Um, we we were out. We played it. It's one of the coolest shows. I don't know if you've seen on my socials, but um, it's a there's a big houseboat company in the middle of the Shushwap Lakes, and uh, and they throw a they basically have there's two things there's one big barge called the Sea Store and one big barge called the Shark Shack and the Shark Shack is actually a floating bar in the middle of the lake like you can't get to it by land. It's the only like licensed bar that you can only get to by boat in Canada. So. And then, but the Sea Store sponsors a show every year and we play on the roof and there was 400 boats all around us floating and we played on top of the roof and it was just like it, right out in the middle of the mountains and the lake is just like the coolest weekend. And then uh, we went to Kelowna for a day and then flew red out here and got all delayed, but it was just got back from BC. So I got my West Coast in and now I'm going out to the East Coast. So definitely. You got uh, your own terrible and you're good to go. Yep. We're getting a little bit of everything. So it's good. <laughs> And we're getting lots of air miles, so that's also good. Oh, the dream. <laughs> Maybe you've had too nice of a weekend, and Air Canada had to humble you a little bit. Literally, it couldn't have worked out better. Like it's nice in it's June, and the weather was great there. But then, as soon mm-hmm. as the way back, it's like, all right, now settle down, son. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just a reminder. <laughs> For real. Okay, let's talk about your album. Sure. It came out earlier this year. Yes. And it was a long one, right? Yep. It was a. 16 songs? 20 yeah. songs. Good guess, Jenna. Yep. 20 I'm songs. That's yep. pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was uh, It was kind of like a, like, you know, that first song I mentioned to you guys about Cavendish when I when I released that first one. I was working with my buddy, Maddie McKay, at the time. And uh, we were about eight songs deep into an album. So we we're almost done of my first album kind of deal in 2019. Like, we, you know, we cut a few singles. Then we're like, okay, we'll get in and finish the record. And we never actually got to finish it um, because I had to move to PEI and it was way too hard to work virtually. So we just, we never finished. We just left them all singles. But some of those songs like define my, like define me to start, like I'll still play, like when I play a show is I still have to play about four side, four songs that I've done with Maddie of the, of the nine in total, because they were like some of my highest streaming organic songs. Cause everybody was just like sharing the heck out of them back then. And, and people, a lot of people know me for those songs, you know? And, uh, <clears throat> so, so I, whenever I decided to move to Nashville, I was like, I want to do an album. Um, but I was like, I was putting it all together and I was like, I don't want to not have those songs on the first end half of my album. And, I also love marketing and like always thinking of cool creative things. It's like my mind's always rolling. I was like, how could I make this work? And I had a song on the record called that was then this is now. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a double sided record. So side then the actual album starts with side then. And the first half is all with Maddie McKay. And then side now is all done in Nashville. So it's in line, all my Calgary stuff. So it's like a double album kind of. And um, it was really cool because I want to make sure on my debut album, you know, and some of those, you know, we were already sitting like at like 2 million streams on the, just that first half. So I was like, I don't want to not have those streams count towards my debut album too, right? It's, it's cool. Like to say it did so well. And um, so I was like, you know what, let's just put it all in together. 
so we put it all together and packaged it as one big, you know, one big release. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of the story behind why it was named that was in this is now. So it was like, this is now this is a new Nashville sound. And uh, yeah, that's so interesting. I, you were saying like some of those first songs did so well organically. You definitely like have had the benefit of having the small town effect too, right? Where for sure. It's like the the town rallies again around the person that they're like excited about and like as long as you're not a piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, no and the, folk. <laughs> and yeah. Everybody just wants to support, right? It's, it's yeah. like it's such a big thing. Yeah, and that was crazy out the gate, like when I released my first song because I didn't really know what it was gonna be like. And luckily I had that small town, you know, back me and then it kinda just helped it snowball afterwards because everyone was like, Okay, like may, maybe help them it's it's tough on a first release as an artist and I I you know I, I'm very thankful the way it worked out for me because like it you know maybe helped some people take me more seriously on my first release like it's hard to like you know build where people are like people you went to high school with and that see you now as like they're supposed to see you as a country artist and compare you to like you know the James Barkers on the radio like they like to be like okay he's like you know on a playlist with these guys like you know what I mean we're we're so used to hearing that so to get people like that to maybe take you more seriously. And when they're so used to just seeing you as a small town kid, um, it was really cool. So it definitely helped to have all that support and the song do good. And, and, uh, yeah, I was, I just cruised to see what song we're talking about. And I realized, um, I didn't realize that was your first song, but I re- very, it was in my early front porch days, but I remember writing about this, <laughs> this about song. All over in, it? Yeah. In this room, because I was, yeah. I spent a bunch of time at my grandparents. Oh, wow. Okay. University even. Yeah. I'm just sitting here. I, was like, I literally remember writing about the song and Logan's cause Logan would just send a bunch at once. And I would just be like, I'll do this, 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 and this. And then I'd like, I just remember I, now I like vividly remember sitting here in this room doing this review I have I had no idea that was your first song. Yeah, and that's that's why we kicked the record off with that song because that was my first ever single and <clears throat> it did so well. Like you know, I didn't know anybody in the industry, and that opened so many doors for me because it was just organically doing really well. <clears throat> and uh, so that was one of the coolest parts about it all. It's just like to see the music organically do good, and uh, and then you know, pandemic obviously happened. I never really got to tour that much, and then. Uh, I planned this album to kind of through all that, like kind of had in the back of my mind, wrote the songs during the pandemic, recorded them in Nashville, released it. And then like, my thing is like, I've, I've always had a very dedicated, like very authentic, real fan base and they always show up. And that's one thing that's hard these days is like, if you want to go play shows to get people out. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go grind this and I'm going to put together all this, this string of shows. So I'm going to put my record out. We're going to do a tour because um, if there's anything more valuable right now, it's to be like, oh, I can go and sell out a theater of 500 people. Here's proof for paid tickets. So <clears throat> I was like, how do I put my stamp on the industry and show that? So I was like, if I release this album, it does good. I can go out and do that. So actually our buddy Riley Taylor came out with me, he opened up for us in the tour and we did, yeah, we did like, you know, two to 500 people venues and we were, we, you know, sold out most of them. We did like PEI and Halifax, two in PEI actually. <clears throat> and then we went out to Calgary and Fredericton, New Brunswick. And that was like so cool to do my first like headlining tour and roll with my whole crew and techs and band and, and uh, something I've always wanted to do. And I'm like a business. I love all that. And I like, literally did the whole thing with my band leader, Mike, ourselves. And then that I uh, caught some attention. Then I ended up signing my management deal. And now it's nice to have people who are helping me with stuff like this. Cause that was a lot. It helps me be a bit more creative now because I'm not handling all the business stuff on my own. Um, and now I can focus more on the music and yeah, working on kind of making it come through the next level with the next stuff. Yeah. Um, I was going to say what's something you've learned after your first headlining tour. Cause the headlining tour is a big lesson for most people. Yeah, um, that's a good question. Honestly, I I think it was like, it made me feel more comfortable in, because I had the hardest time transferring. Like, I was not like transferring, but like from going from being cover band bar star to playing my originals. And my MD was like, dude, there's 500 people that have paid $20 to come watch you play tonight. They don't want to hear you play. Cadillac Ranch and Baton Rouge and I was like and we sat down my set and I only did one cover in my 90 minute set you know and uh it was like 
it was that was a challenging thing for me because like i said my early days in alberta those first three years it like my band like my and these are all full band shows we would play 50 weekends a year and it was just you know three one hour cover song cover song cover song and then like i get this kind of not like it's not like it's a bad thing if anything it taught me it taught me a lot about like how to be a performer on stage right like to work a crowd but like i would have this when i would sing 500 miles in the crowd were all like da 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 back or lose yourself and they're all going wild it's like you did lose yourself as one oh, of your yeah, covers for years and now jelly rolls doing it i'm like oh do i keep doing it but we did that since like 2017 there's a video of that dan and shay show actually i was do you lose yourself and but if i learned anything from it, it's like back then like i would play for these crowds and i would feel that energy but then if i would get so insecure about my originals because i would be like squeeze one in in these three one hour sets i want an hour and then nobody knows it and it's just like you know what i mean it was kind of like i would get this like i'm a good entertainer but then but i was like i enjoy playing the cover songs more because people enjoyed them more at the time so whenever i whenever i like and i think it was great for me looking back because i learned again how to work a crowd and now when i now that i have originals people know i can build my show around that and <clears throat> you know and then same thing kind of goes down to like the Nashville Broadway thing. I like talking about this a lot because there's some people that like bash on people who play Broadway. And I'm like, I don't. And I, cause I did it myself when I went down there, I had to pay the bills. I, I, I couldn't go down there and live and pay my rent. There's no way I could. I, I don't, you know, I'm not fortunate enough or like I'm not in that place in my life right now. You know, I'm not crazy at stocks online or something and making <laughs> banks somewhere else. I, I had to, make money to live in Nashville to pay my rent. And uh, so my first two years I was there, I actually played cover band stuff, but I was like, I can't get caught. It was again, that same feeling is like the weekends in Nashville where the crowds are going wild, they're cheering for you. But I was like, I always had to keep in the back of my mind, play two or three days a week and then make sure I'm still writing and focusing on my mm -hmm. originals. And like, I don't play down there anymore, but like, it's like, it felt good because I, I was still learning how to be a performer and like if like that's how i feel about the Bro the broadway thing is i have a lot of there's a lot of great canadian artists you know working their butts off in nashville as long as they're down there writing and recording and still doing the artist thing if they got to go play a gig to make a couple hundred bucks to pay their rent good on them if they're paying the rent with that you know if anything you're getting stage experience so like the hardest thing with that tour is just like from being a guy who's used to playing covers to move over to play like in 90 minutes of originals you know um so it was like a definite like learning experience and now i'm way more comfortable in it and like yeah almost a little identity crisis you're like yeah. you have to re relearn who you are on stage with your own sound and your own music because like if people are paying tickets to come see you specifically as the headliner they're gonna be so annoyed if you play if i was used to for covers. six years and i'm trying to read the room i'm like oh they want to hear wagon wheel That'll light them up. <laughs> or I'm like, hey, what one of my originals is going to light them up? Because I'm hmm. not going to play Waggle Meal for people who paid to see my original music and are buying my merch. And uh, yeah, it was cool. It was it was really cool. Like you know, seeing doing that and seeing like crowds singing my own words back was really cool. But yeah, it was definitely that was uh, the hardest part for me. It took like two or three shows till I was like, okay, they're digging it. Even though like you know, so-and-so brought their girlfriend and she may not know my music. Like, you know, that person, maybe they're not melting because they're, they don't want me to see, they know every word. Some people <laughs> are so weird about that. Right. They don't want me to look like a super fan or whatever. And it like, even though they're not, they're like, I don't want to look like that. So I can't show them I know every song, but they're there to hear <laughs> your music. So it was definitely a, a cool learning experience and uh shout out to anybody who is still doing the cover band stuff. And if you're writing songs, I like, I, you know, I have mad respect for you if you're, cause that, that's a job, you know, that's the way I look at it too. It's like, if you treat that as a job that can benefit you so much, you can learn how to enter, like, you know, some of the best, like even Chris Jansen, he played Tootsies for years. You know, everybody knows he's like one of the best performers. Why? Because he was playing cover, cover songs, like working crowds, but then whenever his music popped off then he had his own hits and then his shows are just tremendous right because hmm. so that's yeah so i have a lot of a ton of respect for people who do that um and uh yeah um okay let's you you mentioned like the management deal coming in 
that's one thing where a lot of people that's one thing where a lot of people aren't sure when they should like get a manager and whatnot so what what made you know like that was the right time for you uh i think after the tour and everything like i needed you know i i kind of came to a point where i'm like oh my god like i need to make sure that i can be creative <clears throat> like i i like have time because I was handling so much business. Like I've marketed this whole record. I was working it around with people, getting people to help work on it. I put this whole tour together and I'm like, I'm going to burn out if I, if I keep doing all this. And, and luckily it was like, I lucked out and had, had a great manager come along who can connect me with a lot of people in the USA, which is like, you know, I think it comes to a point where it's like, you know, I have, I have some friends who like have, more like assistant people hire too. It's like, it doesn't have to be a manager at the, at the time, you know, it's like someone to help them with, because there's so much to do as an independent artist. Right. But luckily for me, I just lucked out and had, you know, someone come along and was very connected in Nashville and helped me in that situation to open more doors. And as a business person myself, it's like, if I've learned anything or if any artists are like listening, I mean, it, I'm just getting new to this thing, but it's like, if you can see the, you know, to have someone come take, you know, percentages to elevate you, elevate you. It's so worth it in the end. Right. So it's like, that's kind of where I was like, I just need a team to come along because I'm going to burn out after all this last four years and it, and it works out great and it's opening a lot of doors now. So it's exciting. It's also like your management is people you've already built relationships with too, right? Big time. It's when you like know somebody and you know that they can accomplish something for you that it's not going to be a wash. For sure, yeah. I had, I had a lot of like meetings with people and try to like find the right people, and you know, it's just like if you like can find people and... you you trust and like and you know that are like working their butt off and proving themselves to you because it's like yeah, you know, Brett Kissel and I, I just I lucked out and got the tour with Brett Kissel this year, and you know, he's telling me he's like you know, whenever your deals start coming through, that's when you got to work twice as hard because. Mm. Because if you want your team to work for you, you got to be giving them everything they want. And it's not just the stuff you want to do. It's what, you know, your manager want, what's your, what your label wants, what they're all texting. You can do this, this, this. Then you got to just do more than just for yourself. There's a lot of people working on other things and it just kind of becomes more of a snowball effect. So, (laughs) yeah. 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 So it's like really on that note, even still, it's like having people who are invested early and actually care because when it gets to those bigger things where it's like, we have to start making, we all have to put in more time. We all have to, you know, it's, it makes, makes and there's nothing better than having someone champion you right in the way that like, Mm -hmm. you know, if there's, I mean, you can promote yourself as much as you want and walk up to somebody and say, I'm great. But like, you know, whenever you find someone who truly champions you and they like prove that to you, like, going up to people and being like, yo, you need to watch this guy's live show or like that stuff. I'm like, that's cool because it makes like, it's, you know, you're putting your word behind like you're, if people respect your word and you're putting your betting your cards on me that, you know, people are going to value what you say all the time. Right. So, yeah. Says yeah. I mean like everyone expects an artist to come up to them and say, you're going to love this song. Cause like, why yeah. would you be, why would you be like, you're going to hate this song, right? Seriously. That doesn't make any sense. But when someone like someone else can, can t- say, can vouch for you or even say to somebody, you should listen to this song. Like at least me personally, I'm, I'm more likely to yep. pay attention. To Anything that. word of mouth so strong, right? I mean, like some people in, were so busy in Nashville with like songwriting and stuff. And someone's like, dude, you got to make time to write with this guy. I'm like, as much as I'm like already with all my people, I'm, you know, word of mouth, like great guy, great writer. I'm like, okay, awesome. So if mm. he's a good, good person or he or she's a good person, and they're like, oh, what a beast of a writer. I'm like, okay, I'll, if I, I trust, you know, if Logan, you told me that, like if you text me, like you got to go set up this, write with this girl coming down from Canada. I'm like, all right, well, if you're going to put your word behind it, I trust you, you know? So, so it's I'm a yeah. pretty trustworthy person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it says a lot, right? It's like, yeah, putting your reputation with someone on the line, believing them and championing them is cool. Definitely. Um, okay, so you are working on a new project. You have a new single out right now. Yeah. So let's talk about the new, the new, the new Ben sound. Chase. Yeah, the new vibe. Yeah. No more hats in interviews, including this one. Yeah. What's the new vibe? Yeah, well, I just find like, and that was part of it too. Like, I was always just trying to chase the new hotness and like do like the. I always tell people, I'm like, no more pretty boy country for me. Like, I uh, I believe like, I was a born entertainer, 
and that's what I want to be doing. And I want to find a way to kind of find those songs that, you know, put people in the summertime feel and just raise their spirits a bit more instead of like, you know, I'll let the Wallens and those guys do all those cool, great Santa My Boots or Stapleton's Tear Your Hearts Out songs because like, you know, they they got the killer, the like the ballad voices. And I'm like, I, I, I don't feel any better anytime than whenever I'm at like, a Jake Owen or Billy Carrington concert. And it's just like that vibe. And I was like, so I've been really focused on writing, you know, I have so many friends that only listen to country music in the summertime. It's mm. like, they're like, we just, it's just more of the vibe with the windows down. I was like, well, that's cool. Cause I'll just release really good songs in the summer and you'll listen to me then, you know? So, <laughs> but it's kind of where I'm at. And I was like, I just want to have, you know, as, again, it's, it's festival season. I'm excited because I get to play like, when I go do these like summertime festivals, I get to play all these nice fun upbeat, get the crowd going songs. And I'm really, really focusing in like, not about being an upbeat song guy, but really just being like the kid who brings the summer festival to you. So um, kind of making people feel like they're on vacation when they're at a festival or something like that or on their way to work. So that's kind of where I'm at these days. And from what I've seen and heard so far, the the vibe very much does feel more like beach summer, very much like, yeah. The Ben Chase vibes of being the saltwater cowboy back in PA. You like grew up on an island. Literally, man, literally and... you grew up. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was I grew up say. on an it's island just... and cruising down beaches with our with our Jeep doors topped off and cru- <laughs> like it's just like, you know, that's kind of where I'm I am when I think about summer and just like that fun world. So I think it's kind of where I'm gonna keep sitting in the pocket. I've I got, you know, the best response I've ever got from a single out of this one out of the gate. So uh and uh yeah, I just wanna kind of maybe be like soundtrack of summer then i can just disappear to an island somewhere in the winter time and and write songs <laughs> not to pei kind of giving way Kenny too much snow. yeah, yeah don't, you, <laughs> pei island in the winter probably isn't the same as no yeah exactly Bahamas but like island <laughs> dip away in the winter time and go somewhere south and <laughs> write some summertime songs and come back with another heater every year and see if we can you know rely on that for a little bit so we'll see where that goes i'm, I'm excited about it i i you know we played uh we played the new single somebody summer just in bc and just felt so good with all these boats around us i was like this feels be so cool. good and uh yeah and i debuted my ne- my next single as well we got three songs uh, with this project and we have one coming out in about five weeks or four at the mm-hmm. end of july and then one yeah, in like september to look back yeah. on the end of summer so it's or by very... the time this comes out in a couple of weeks <clears throat> or it may be out now so <laughs> search me up and look it up but yeah so it's cool because we have that very you know set up that way so it's very like i got a song kick off summer won the party in the middle and one looking back on summer coming so i'm excited about all that nice a full a full bookend beginning middle and end yep and then i'll disappear to that island <laughs> <laughs> for now that's nashville <laughs> seriously yeah so then we got the new single which we we just tried it out in the crowd out there but um the second i heard the song i was like i want this song um and i'm not much of a drinker myself i was when i was younger but i was like picturing younger ben at a festival hearing this song how much beers you would be crushing and it's called bad day to be a beer and i was like this would literally have me shotgunning over and over beers um so like this is yeah this song's gonna get me fired up and uh it's again i'm always just trying to picture if i'm if i'm on the beach or on a boat like what song would come on when i'm like picking what songs i'm gonna record that would make me go okay yep all right, it's we're we're sending it like it's a Saturday, even if it was a Tuesday, right? <laughs> and uh, I've had those days, like you just end up on a buddy's boat on a Tuesday. We've in P- all yeah, had those days. Yeah, right. And it's like something just start vibes start flowing. So I'm like, when I heard this song, I was like, yeah, I I love this one. And uh, whether it's out now, whenever we uh, when we whenever they hear this, um, get a beer ready before you turn it on, and uh, and uh, you'll I think you'll enjoy it. It's definitely a Still in that same realm of summertime party vibes, and I think you like it. Nice. I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, I'm stoked to show you guys. Yeah. Well, Ben, uh, we're coming up to the end of our time here. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, where can uh, people find you? Find me on social media. The handle is the Ben Chase. It's short and sweet, the like ben me, Chase. easy to find. And uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm always active on social media. I've always, you know, stay really tight on there with people, and and uh, yeah be on there and uh watch for a lot of summer fun content you're supposed to say you can find me by the beach all summer oh yeah <laughs> you can find me on the beach all summer long blasting up my new music <laughs> find me on a stage 
or you can find me backstage turning up Kenny Chesney and Jimmy Buffett and uh, <laughs> drinking nice, nice That's beer and enjoying the sunshine. Sounds like a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks so much, Ben. All right. Thank you, guys. Nice hanging with you. Thanks for listening to another episode of On the Porch with Front Porch Music. We're so lucky to be able to chat with artists and make episodes like this one. If you like the podcast, remember to rate and review us and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. It's the easiest way to support the show. Remember to check out frontporchmusic.ca to keep up with new music releases, exclusive artist interviews, and more. We'll catch you again on the porch in a couple of weeks. On the Porch is hosted by Logan Miller and Jenna Weiser and produced and edited by Jason Saunders. That's me. Our theme song was written, produced, and performed by Owen Rigland.